When you Google professional organizers in your area, what happens? Does your website show up? And if it doesn't yet, do you want it to? SEO or search engine optimization is the collection of all the little tasks that you can do on your website to make sure that when people are searching for organizers in your area, that they find you. In today's podcast episode, we are joined by expert Caitlin Strimple to talk through a bunch of little tweaks that you can start making on your website today. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. Each week, you'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. Thank you so much to our guest today, Caitlin Strimple. She is an SEO expert, and I'm particularly excited to welcome her onto the podcast today. Hi, Caitlin. Hello, Jen. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so good. So the thing that is really special about Caitlin is that she is a part of our network of service providers that Pro Organizer Studio um, sort of maintains a group of women that we're working with at any particular time um, so that professional organizers who have a need for their business, such as website design, finding a virtual assistant, social media management, SEO services, can come to us and we can put you in touch with someone who we've already established a relationship with and who already understands what a professional organizer even is, right? (laughs) Because there's nothing worse when you are, especially when you're brand new in business and you're still trying to like really get used to explaining yourself and your services to then be sitting down with, for example, an SEO um, service person or a website designer. And they're like, okay, so what are we trying to do here? And you're like, uh, (laughs) okay. So that's, that's the value of coming to us when you have a need like that. And so Caitlin right now is our, our SEO gal. And, um, she has been working with professional organizers. So she already kind of gets it. Like, what is it that a local service provider, such as a professional organizer needs in order for her website to get found? All right, so I know that was a long introduction. Caitlin, I would love for you to introduce yourself, and then I'll have a ton of questions for you after that. So take it away. So I am Caitlin. I started in this business about 12 years ago now and have um, I have experience with pay-per-click and SEO, which is what I help your listeners out with. And um, I've been loving it. It's, you know, I've been in the ad industry world for a while and slowly I've navigated towards digital because I love digital marketing. It's awesome because you can actually see results. You can see the analytics, you can tweak it and optimize it and literally come up with a campaign that's going to be awesome and live on for months and months and bring you leads and get you found online. Mm, The math, like the math nerd inside me loves that. Like maybe that should be my second or third career. (laughs) Such a math nerd. I know. And just like looking at analytics and, you know, seeing how you can improve it and just seeing the numbers go up is, oh, gets me. That's awesome. So Caitlin, tell us like, what is the goal, uh, like for a professional organizer out there of doing search engine optimization for her website? Like explain it like we're five years old, like what, (laughs) like, let's just establish, like, what is the end goal for even like thinking about this, like as a project? So search engine optimization, first of all, is getting your website to Google. So when you go on and you yourself are searching for something, you're going to go to Google and type in a question, which we call query, and then those websites pop up. So SEO is getting your website to the top of those search engines, and it's going to get you found by anyone who is searching and needs your business. Search engine optimization is great because these people are searching most of the time for a service that they actually need and they're ready to purchase and ready to buy. So if you're not showing up, then they're going to go to your competitors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is interesting. And I know that I've, uh, you know, talked to a lot of my students about this because it is something that they can do on their own, but it is not an overnight success project. Like it's more of a long-term sort of slow and steady deal. Is that right? Oh yeah. It's like going to the gym. You can't expect a six pack if you go once. 
and right. <laughs> you know, or like go even for like a full month and then never go for six months. So it's something mm. that you can do it slowly and it's actually better to do it slowly and just, you know, you could do one thing a day for six months and be, you know, totally fine. Um, but just as long as you're consistent and you're doing small little steps along the way for sure. So, mm -hmm. um, and even for brand new websites, Google, they'll, uh, take a look at them and they might not even start ranking the website until three months in just mm. to make sure that they're a legit website, that they're, you know, a company that people want to go search for and they're looking for. And it's just, it's a quality website because the end goal of Google is to make sure that, you know, their users are getting the best experience. Oh, absolutely. And to that point, wouldn't you kind of argue, and of course I know you're biased, <laughs> wouldn't you argue that spending a little bit of time every day on search engine optimization, SEO stuff is a little more of a long-term bigger leverage play than going and playing on Instagram a little bit every day just to like build up your social media account. And reason why I asked that is because of what you said, you know, this is how you get in front of people who are searching ready to buy versus out there browsing around and accidentally stumble upon you and say, Oh, that's cool. But it might be, especially with our industry, six months, three years until somebody comes back around and says, Oh yeah, like I'm really ready to buy your services. Absolutely. So in social media world, you're targeting people, kind of the, the, the types of people they are, the demographics, what they like, things like that. On Google, you're searching for the people who are ready to buy and are searching your keyword, your business into Google, ready to get you. So, and on top of that too, um, you know, once you stop posting on Instagram, you're kind of gone. You know, after mm -hmm. a few months, after if you do SEO for six months, you know, a little bit every day, you can set back a little bit once you're at the top you know, maybe not go away completely, but it's a lot more right. passive and you're getting those, those passive visitors to your website. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. I really love that. So question now, what are the key words really that professional organizers want to focus on? It's, it most likely will change depending on your location. So you want to do your keyword research. And that is my first step that I always tell people when starting SEO is to go do your keyword research. So if you have a Google AdWords account, you can go on, they have a tool there, or you can go to a website. It's called ubersuggest.com. Okay. And there are actually, there are tons of websites out there. I just like this one the best. And you can go and just start searching keywords. And by keywords, I mean phrases that describe your business. So it could be home organizer, uh, professional, professional organizer, or maybe it's, you know, professional kitchen organizer, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And you want to go and search those keywords and you want to look for a few things. You want to look for if there's traffic, you know, are people actually searching for that, which, you know, Uber suggests and all those other tools will, will tell you that. And, and is that, will it automatically say it like specific to your area, how many people are searching for it? Or do you have to sort of input your location with it? So, uh, on Uber suggest you have to input your location with it. Okay. But if you have Google AdWords and you can even do this, you can set up a Google AdWords account for free. I think it's ads.google.com. You can go in there and they have a tool. It's where you actually run pay-per-click ads. Um, but you, people use this tool a lot for SEO. So you go in there and you can type in just your keyword, no location. And there's a setting where you can change the location. So it gets a lot more, intricate in, in regards to location and geographic um, areas where you're servicing. Okay. Let me dig in a little bit further. Caitlin, so you've worked with a couple of professional organizers now. What are some things that you have noticed that are specific about our industry, if there are any, that, um, that you think are, are insightful little tips that you could share today? I think it goes along with picking a really great keyword. So you'll put in, if you type in home organizer or clo closet organizer, you'll see that there's actual physical products that pop up. Yes. You need to make sure that you are bidding or optimizing for keywords that have search intent. So that's another, another little trick about finding a good keyword is you always want to type it into Google because Google knows best. And if you type in closet organizer and a bunch of, you know, closet physical organizers pop up, Mm -hmm. People knows that that's what their searches are searching for. So maybe it's closet organizing services, 
that yeah. you just okay. want to be very specific and actually, you know, go in and do the manual, manual labor yourself, which manual labor, meaning it takes two seconds to do. Right. So right. Type it into Google yourself and see what pops up. And if it's, if it's, um, physical items, then start moving towards the services keywords. Mm. And again, that could potentially change based on your location. Okay. Okay. So that's really interesting too, is that this stuff is not going to be the exact same everywhere. I'm curious too. This is just my own thoughts. What have you noticed about what Google believes the search intent is when it comes to the words professional organizer? I have to tell you why I'm asking is because sometimes when you search those words in a certain city, professional organization, like a professional organization it can be like what, you know, like your chamber of commerce or like whatever. Like, I think that Google is still confused in a lot of areas about what that is. Have you noticed that? I actually haven't noticed that on my end. Okay. To be honest. Um, so maybe it's getting a little bit smarter. Maybe it's, you know, I it, hope so. it's, a, it's an, uh, you know, it's like a trend that's just, you know, suddenly coming and everyone's searching for this now. So mm. it, you know, Google does kind of morph with the trends. Um, so I haven't run into that issue yet, but that's definitely something you want to check out for sure by again, putting in your own search in Google. That's really interesting. And this kind of goes hand in hand with what I feel is happening in people's brains. When you talk about professional organizer, I feel like sometimes I have to, if I'm going to be saying it in conversation, I usually say something like, um, a home organizing business versus calling myself a professional organizer to mm -hmm. someone who may or may not be familiar with that term yet. So I'll say something like, I'll say something like, um, I have a home organizing business and they'll be like, Oh, and I'll say, have you ever heard of that? And they'll say either yes or no. And I'm like, yeah, it's called a professional organizer. So that's like people ask all the time about an elevator speech. And I feel like almost, um, maybe in your, maybe in your, in your search terms, you need a little, uh, you know, a few different variations on what you're calling yourself. Um, just in case people are typing in like, um, a uh, uh, decluttering service for my home. Mm -hmm. Like that's a, that's a huge variant, but it is possible that that's the only thing in their brain that they can associate with what we do. Absolutely. And so what, especially for a business like you guys, where there are a few different keywords, but technically it's really all the same. You want to hone in on one keyword per page. So mm, maybe, okay. you know, your home page is, you know, home organizing services and another page would be professional organizing services. So again, it's, it's close, but it's different enough where you can put that keyword on a different page and really hone in on that specific keyword per page. So you're hitting all those keywords that people are, might be searching for. Mm, okay. Really good. So let's talk about a person out there who has, his, they're bearing with us. They're trying to track with what we're all, the, all the good information we're giving them. And they're like, Whoa, I have so much to do now because they're like, okay, I got to do keyword research. I got to do all this. Okay. Would you recommend, let's go back to something you kind of mentioned at the beginning about competitor research. If they're a little bit confused about where to even start, tell us how could they use some of those competitor research strategies just to even find out what keywords, like say that there's a handful of other organizing companies in their area, like how could they find out what keywords those competitors are ranking for so that they'll already kind of have a leg up on here are the things that people must be searching for in my area in order to find my competitors. Hopefully all that made sense. <laughs> Take it slow guys. I promise Caitlin, Caitlin is here to explain it. Honestly, just go into Google and do it yourself. Go okay. in and type in a bunch of keywords Like maybe you've done your research um, or, you know, you just, you know, off the top of your head, the keywords, since it is your, your business, you can go in and type in Google and see who's popping up and you can take a look. You can see the little blue, the blue headlines that pop up in Google. Those are called title tags. Look at that. See what they're saying in those title tags. Um, and then also the description underneath too. So you can kind of get a sense for what they're do saying. Do you mean, do you mean the titles on each one of your competitors, individual pages? No, sorry. So if you actually go in and you type a search query into Google and okay. you have all the websites that pop up, there's a little headline and it's the headline that you click to go out to their website. So it's just, just by even looking at that, you don't even have to click out to the website. It's just, you're oh, looking at the headlines that pop up in Google. Um, so for example, you know, I'd give, I'll give an example for my company. I can put, you know, SEO expert. 
and then I'll say my name and then my company name. So if you type SEO expert Phoenix, you know, into Google, you can see that. So it, that title will pop up and you can just see the title and you can kind of just take a guess that I'm going to be going after SEO experts since that's in my actual title. Okay. That makes sense. That, okay. <laughs> if they do that and then they kind of see like, what are the top companies that are popping up in their area and then use the tool that you said before, SEO um, Quake, SEO Quake to mm -hmm. visit their competitors and see if what their competitors are doing as far as titling their pages, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then even if they sort of like, we're not going to say copy, but just modeled their own SEO um, practices after that, then that would at least kind of get them on the right track. Is that right? Correct. Yes. And nowadays there's always somebody out there. I mean, SEO is, you know, so intricate and there's so many things that you can do and a lot of people aren't doing it properly. So if you go in there and just find one thing that you can do better, focus on that. Mm, okay. Give me, give me an example of like one thing that you can do better. Uh, a lot of, a lot of things that I see is that, um, people will put their business name first and then the keyword they're trying to rank for. So if you're trying to rank for the same keyword, put the keyword first and then your business name. It's both going to pop up in the search engine, but Google will see the first, the first words of your title and they automatically think that those are the most important words. Okay. That is a really good tip. I have never heard before. So ladies who already have their titles and stuff set up, you can just easily go in and switch those around. And that could potentially move you up in the rankings, right? Oh yeah. Love it. Mm -hmm. oh, that's such good stuff, Caitlin. Okay. So let's, let's rewind a little bit. So I know some people are going to listen to this and, um, you know, kind of go out and try some things on their own. If anyone is listening to this and is like, oh wow, like maybe I should put on my, uh, goals list, you know, to work with an SEO, um, expert like you, um, you know, how, how do they go about, like, what is the, you know, what is the process for getting started? What do they need to know in advance about, um, working with someone in order to get their rankings up and then maintain it themselves? So I think in that regard, it's just, you know, it's reaching out to somebody and it, don't be afraid to ask questions. If you're looking to hire someone, you know, what are your past results and not mm. just, you know, what are the results right now? It's where were, where was your client before you started? And where are they now? So it's looking at, you know, how did you actually help them in those, in those few months um, or those few years, however long they worked with them. So don't be afraid to ask those questions. Um, and then honestly, any, any person who's giving you a free consultation should be able to give you something where you can take away that day and go and do it yourself. Mm. And again, I mean, there are lots of blogs out there and a lot of great resources to start doing this yourself. That is awesome. Um, okay. So here's my next question. Speaking of blogs, <laughs> um, I think one thing that a lot of people know about SEO is that blogging is good for SEO. However, okay. I know firsthand that a lot of professional organizers, they would love to have the time to do a blog, but they feel sort of like, guilty slash a little scared. Like, is it going to be bad for, you know, search if I never do a blog? Like, can you give us sort of like a balanced look at how important that is? And if that is something that you end up recommending to all of your clients? I recommend it 90% of the time for okay. sure. Content is big and Google just came back with an update the past month, even stating themselves that content is going to be a lot a lot better for SEO and bigger for SEO ranking purposes. And it's not something that you have to do every day, all day. You know, I would say, I would say if, you know, if you're really nervous about starting it or you just really don't feel like you have the time, do one post a week. And right. one post a week is better than doing four posts in one week and then not going back ever again. And okay, that's good to know. Yes. And quality is way better than quantity in regards to how many times you post. So it's better to post even every other week, you know, sit down and come up with a list, um, of things you want to discuss, maybe do some keyword research about that and figure out what your title should be. And then it, we try to keep the blog posts over a thousand words. Okay. So 
So, um, and just, you know, make sure you have your headlines in there, make sure it looks nice, it's readable, and it actually gives value. And, you know, and if you are on Instagram, shout it out to your Instagram and try to get people, you know, following to your blog. And if you're giving great content, people are going to come back and look for that and start linking to that as well. Um, you can also take a graphic and post on Pinterest and drive traffic to your blog that way. But Google really likes to see that you're providing value over anything, over pretty much any on-site optimization you can make. That's, you know, it's really important for them and you're doing it consistently. Mm, okay. Interesting. So I have a question. How quickly do you think, like, let's say someone out there is newer in her business and she wants to move up the Google search rankings and potentially get ahead of some of her, you know, competitors who have been in business longer, but who are not blogging at all. Like, would you say she could do that realistically within three months, six months, or would it take a whole year? Like, is that something that you would recommend as sort of like a quicker competitive strategy or more still of a long-term? That's, plan? that's still going to be a little bit more long-term as well, depending on the area you're servicing, depending on what the competition is like and things like that. Um, it, it all depends really, but I do have a tip that I think would be really helpful. Um, so Google my business, that is a business listing. Go and sign up for that because that helps you get on the maps, on the Google maps. You know, when you search something into mm -hmm. Google and then, um, even before the organic listings, businesses pop up with their location, getting on Google, my business will help you pop up in those maps. And it is one of the most underutilized tools. So if you go in there and you fill out your profile completely, put in your images, put in a video, and there's actually also a space in there where you can have, where you can actually post. So it'd be like a little mini blog and you can actually do your mini blogs in there. And Google oh loves Oh my that. gosh. I did not know that. Yeah. And it, you want to be careful because you want to make sure that you're not posting the same content there as you are on your website. Okay. Posting it may be a variation. So maybe, um, on your website, you talk about the five biggest mistakes in home organizing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you can go to your Google, my business and maybe put in, you know, that my top three tips of home organizing. So you maybe talk about that. So it's a little, it's not the same, but it's easily twistable where it's, yeah. you know, you can sit down in one sitting and get those both out. Yeah. So on Google, my business, you're talking about the top three tips and you're like, Hey, you know, for more information on the top five things, the top five mistakes that I see that you shouldn't do click on over to my website. So you're still getting that juice link to your website, but you're, you're organizing or sorry, you're optimizing for Google, my business, the Google maps, and also the Google organic search engines. So I hope that made sense. no, it, it totally does. Okay. And that was like eye opening because I did not know there was a way to kind of do a mini blog in there. Now, just having that mini blog on the Google, my business, does that in itself help your other site rank higher? Or is it the fact that you're linking? It's so Google, my, uh, Google, my business is on Google maps. So it's a little bit of a different search engine than actual Google organic listings. Okay. You no, know, it's within the same search they use different criteria. So you're, oh, interesting. So yeah. So on Google, my business, you're looking to get ranked on those maps, mm -hmm. but if you're linking out to your website that will help your website get ranked as well. So you all want it to link together and you know, all raise up together. So that's really interesting because on Google maps results, mm -hmm. um, I always assumed it was in order of like distance from you. And that, yes. So that is one, one criteria. But, but you know, only if, one of the criteria. Yeah, exactly. So there's a ah. bunch. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ranking factors. And you know, if you're in the area but you don't have an optimized Google My Business account, you're not going to pop up, or mm. you're going to pop up above you. So optimizing your Google My Business account is that a quicker prospect then than really working on like your site titles and your header tags and all that stuff that I know is like ah, like so overwhelming for someone right now. <laughs> Uh, yes, you want to do both at the same time for sure. But, okay. and the reason I say Google, my business is quicker is just because it's so underutilized. That's really yeah. gold nugget right there, guys. That is so, so good. 
Um, Caitlin, I know that to a lot of people, um, this, you know, it's a little bit like drinking from a fire hose. It's a lot to even think about and try to process. I know there'll be some ladies out there who are like, this is, this is how my brain works. I'm going to take this and run on my own. But can you give us, okay, if you could just summarize like three tips that someone could sit down for a few hours this afternoon and implement right away that would make a difference. Like what would those three things be? All right. My top three things would be number one, sign up for Google My Business and fill out that account completely. Number two, do your keyword research. So you should have a, at the end of your keyword research, you should have a list, a good list of a few keywords that you can start to optimize for. And then number three is just update your title tags on your website. So go into your page and give it a title with your keyword. And just make sure that each title tag on um, each page is different. So from the keywords that you already, you already did, you already researched, take those and just assign a keyword to a page and do your title tags. That's awesome. So you're, and, and really you're just talking about slight variations on similar keywords, really, right? Like we were saying, some people call it professional organizer. Some people call it home organizing business, like that kind of thing. Exactly. And even, yeah. you know, your homepage could be, you know, professional organizer and then your business name. And then the services page could be professional home organizing services. Yeah. Okay. Good. Like that. That's so good. Well, that's easy enough, especially if you have yeah. a website already, guys. And, you know, Squarespace, for example, I tend to recommend a lot because it's just so user friendly for, um, for newbies out there, you know, go back in because you know, when you set up your website, you probably skipped over some of this stuff because you're like, I don't know what the page title should be. <laughs> so go, go back into your page titles. That's probably, you know, a, a one hour task to open all of those up. If you've got like maybe six or eight pages on your site and you know put in a title and like caitlin says it should be slightly different on every page i didn't know that either so <laughs> this was wow such good learning caitlin thank you so yes. much for coming on to talk about this because i know it's a overwhelming but extremely valuable topic it is thank you so much for having me and seriously just little little bits and pieces every day will do wonders for your website that is awesome. So Caitlin, if people want to get to know a little bit more about you, because like I said, you have a whole separate business. You give away a lot of free, good tips and information. Um, how can they find you? So I like to live on Instagram at CRS Digital Marketing. That's where I give away my best tips and where you can hang out with me pretty much on a daily basis. That is awesome. And I know your mailing list too. You give little tutorials. Don't you have a YouTube channel as well? Um, I, I link to a private YouTube channel from my, from my Ooh, email nice. list. Yeah. Love it. Oh, girls get on the email list. Cause she, <laughs> she knows what she's talking about. Okay. And if you guys, if you've listened to all this and you're like, Ooh, this is on my to-do list big time to actually work with Caitlin, get my site, like all set up, pimped out, and then, you know, be able to maintain it yourself possibly, or could just continue to have Caitlin take care of it for you. Um, go to proorganizerstudio.com slash services, uh, or just visit our contact page directly. You can request to, um, be put in touch with her, um, or, and, or any other, you know, person from our service network currently that you might be interested in. So definitely want to promote that and check it out because like I said, what we try to do is make it easier for you guys by working with people who we have already um, you know, educated and, um, helped them understand what it is you guys are trying to do so that, you know, when Caitlin gets your inquiry, you guys can hit the ground running. And I know that is a good feeling. Um, Caitlin, I hope that you like our other service network uh, providers also report that professional organizers are a joy to work with because they're just so dang organized, right? They really are. I know. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's, it's, a, I like being like the, uh, the matchmaker. I love that. I mm -hmm. love that. Thank you guys so much. This was so, so good. If you enjoyed this episode and want to be, you know, in the know about future content that is coming up, please join our free Facebook group just for the podcast. Um, search for pro organizer studio podcast on Facebook. It's free. Um, you can request future guests. We would love to hear your ideas. And of course that link is in our show notes as well. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Caitlin. Thank you. Talk to you soon, Jen. Have a good day. Okay. You too. Thank you for listening to the pro organizer studio podcast. 
If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.